sit. This is Mojo. I had a buddy named Mojo who's passed away right around the same time this guy was born, so this may be a reincarnation of my buddy. All right, in this video, uh, well, Mojo has a problem. Um, I'm going to show you. If you try to reach and pet him, he'll do that. So you can see that he didn't actually touch me with his teeth. He air bit and nipped, but it's a very sudden, quick movement. And it's his way of saying that I don't want you to touch me. And uh, he does this uh, with everybody, really, with the exception of his guardian. Um, his guardian uh, leaves him at, at uh, a relative's house, and one of the relatives had him on his lap, and he would do the same thing even if it was on, on the lap, which is really confounding for us. But for dogs, um, it's kind of his way of saying, I think I didn't give you permission to do that. Now, there's made multiple reasons for this. It could have been because he was injured before. He is a shelter dog. Mojo, sit. Sit. Remember, always say the treat and the command word after the treat goes in his mouth. So basically, uh, what we want to do is, uh, so he's, it's a defense tech mechanism. And so when you reach for it, and the problem is he doesn't give a lot of warning signs. So what I want to do in this video is show you how you can use the principles of counter conditioning to hopefully help Mojo start to develop a positive association with people touching him. Now I have the Tricky Trainer Chicken Liver Treats here. Um, I've been setting this up before that we started filming this early in the session. I'm squeezing these so they're flat like a pancake. And what I'm doing is I'm letting him chew on them in little bites. So it takes him about three to five bites before he can get all of them. So what I'm going to do now, Mojo, come here, here buddy. I need you to be a little bit closer for this one. And this is a good illustration is he's staying a little bit further away from me. That gives him a little bit of what we call escapability. So I always want the dog to do the work. All right. So what I'm going to do is I want to get him used to me reaching for him without actually the touching part. Most of us think I'm going to touch the dog. I'm going to show you I'm a good person by touching you and petting you. The dog's like, I'm not sure if I want you to pet me. So when you're doing counter conditioning, which is what this is, I want to be delivering the reinforcer, in this case, the chicken liver treat, before the stimulus happens. The stimulus is going to be my hand doing this movement. So what I do is I start letting him chew on it. See how he stopped? So what I'm doing is I'm just getting him used to being There you go. So that was too big of a movement for him. Come here, Mojo. And he, if he's trying to do damage, he would be holding down. So he's not trying to do it. What he's saying is, I'm uncomfortable. And that was a good illustration of just that movement was, I didn't even touch him, and that was too much for him. So what we're going to do is we're going to go very slow. Let me chew on it. The treats, and my hand stopped because the treat was about ready to be done. Smashing another one. And I want him looking at it. I want him to be surprised for this at all. I want to, this is a little bit of what we call a conditioned emotional response. I want him to basically just, by doing this very slowly and very progressively, he gets very comfortable with the hand touching him. Now, it might not be in this video, I might not get all the way to the point where I can touch him. And that's okay. It's going to be a process, just like it is for us building up trust with someone. We don't, have, we don't trust someone on our first date with them. It takes several dates before you know that person was kind and considerate and uh, did, through its actions showed us that we, it wasn't, uh, we're not a threat and we can, can be trusted. So I'm going kind of slow with my movement. These are really, really good treats. And you're still a little bit far, farther away. You see him backing away a little bit, so I'd like him to come a little bit closer. There we go. Sitting is a good indicator of the dog is, feels comfortable. Now he's nipped it a couple times when he's been sit, seated, so it doesn't mean everything. But usually, and I don't want to reach too far away from him. And I kind of position him so he's looking at my hand. When I was doing it before, he was actually looking here, and that can be like I'm trying to uh, trick him, essentially. Now after a while, Mojo's like, when people reach for me, it's not something, something bad, it's actually a good thing. Something, something good happens. So again, I made too big of a mover. Come here, buddy. Sit. And again, if he's really fearful about it or he really took it the wrong way, he wouldn't sit this proximate. He would be further away. So like I said, this might be a video that might be, this might be something that has to, that has to take a little bit of time, a little bit of practice. And again, I made the same mistake. He was looking in a different direction. Now, dogs have three proximate, uh, three levels of, of closeness. Uh, intimate space is a bubble of about three feet. Uh, three feet to seven feet of what's considered social space. And everything beyond three feet is what we call public space. And so just like us, dogs can be more particular um, the closer we get to a certain distance. So if you're doing this or somebody's doing this with you, take note of how far away they were. So he disengaged the treat and I stopped moving my hand immediately. 
Uh, but take notice of how far away you, your hand was from him or the person who's doing this so until he, you kind of figure out, okay, now we're eight inches away, and then go, eventually we want to go seven to six to five. Also, a little uh, touch exercise, which is a little bit different for this. I'd hoped to get, be able to get all the way to him, but he's told me he's not comfortable with it. Like I said, the worst thing we can do, well, I didn't say this earlier, but one of the worst things you can do is go on your own timetable and go enforce it. If the dog's telling you he's not comfortable with something, that's okay. It's entirely his prerogative to say that. And the more that I don't touch him and just practice getting progressively closer and closer, the more trust that he builds up and eventually feels comfortable with. Now, if you do have a dog with this problem, I asked the vet, uh, the guardian about this already. She said she already talked to her vet and to make sure that he's not feeling, uh, he doesn't have a broken ribs or something like that. So you always want to make sure you rule out the uh, any physical ailments first. All right, let's try this one more time. Buddy. So you see, at this point, I'm really close to him. I'm not touching, but he's not reacting the same way. So it's going to be little, little steps at a time. Now, something else I like to do is something called a touch exercise, uh, which is basically just teaching the dog to touch my hand with their nose. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, I have a couple treats in this hand. I'm going to flash my hand near him. Now, this might be a little bit, we'll see how it does. I'm going to go flash it a little bit slower than I normally would. So when he touches it with his nose, then I put the treat on my hand. Now, I'm not moving this hand. Mojo, sit. And then I put the treat on that hand. You know, see that it's there, buddy? There we go. It's like, well, I might be getting full of treats. I'm a little guy. So I'm just tearing these in half as a result of what I was talking about. So there we go. So I'm getting him to initiate the contact instead of me initiating the contact. So this is, there we go. See how he's reaching a little bit further each time. So this is another nice game that your friends can do with him where he's initiating the contact and when he does, he's rewarded for doing so. So instead of us initiating the contact, which is when he reacts, eventually we can get back there. Now, as you're doing this, you want to gradually make him go a little bit further and further to get to the hand. So he had to reach over a little bit further there. There you go. I'll do it this side, this is a little bit better camera angle. See how he had to reach there? He had to reach about two or three inches. So this gets him moving towards the human to get the contact as opposed to the human going towards him. Now the last thing I'm going to show you is uh, something I call a focus exercise. And this is usually something I do uh, separately by its own video, but I think this might help as well because it's going to promote good, healthy eye contact with him. Uh, normally I would be doing this seated because I want my knees to be about his uh, height and his, his head. Um, I have about 12 treats in this hand, well in this case I brought I about 8. And I'm show him that I have one. I'll leave it right there. And I'm just watching his eyes. I'm waiting for him to look up at me. Now, I'm not going to lure him. I'm just focus. The only thing that gets him to treat is looking up at my face. I'm not giving him any commands or any lures. I'm just waiting for him to focus, do the thing that I want him to do. When he does the thing that I want, then I reward him. Focus. You see, now he's already starting to catch on to this. And he's looking at the human. Focus. I'm saying the word after. Focus. It goes into his mouth. So um, as you're doing this, you should see what he's doing is he's just looking up at them. Focus. Faster and faster. So this helps him engage with the humans a little bit more. It can be a nice little uh, exercise that uh, helps him. Eye contact can be a challenge. And... Uh, so for a dog, to teach a dog to look up his, in our face, focus voluntarily, would be really helpful. Uh, and the last little thing, can he catch? Not very well. Yeah. Mojo, sit. Come here, no. Come here, buddy. Sit. So when you're doing this, 
So for me, because he, he might nip, I don't want to, it would, wouldn't be a smart thing for me to do. But for you, what you can do is get some treats and just practice throwing. And don't go, a lot of people throw like this, one, two, and then they throw the third one and the dog stops looking. Mm -hmm. So just throw the first one and try to throw it good so it just, all he has to do is open his mouth. If he doesn't pick it up, make sure you grab it off the ground. Now, if he starts going after you or nipping at you, then, then stop doing that. It's not a good activity. But teaching him to catch is a wonderful activity because that way when we meet people and they want to pet him, you're like, ah, he's a little bit skittish a bit being touched by new people, but he loves to play catch. Mm -hmm. Would you like to toss him a couple treats? I would love to toss him treats. Now, again, it's another way for him to engage with the humans. Touch. Well, this is a medley of a couple of different uh, techniques that we can use, uh, primarily counter conditioning. So I'd like you to see if we can find somebody who will listen to you, who can do the, the, the motion that I was showing you. And when you do this, make sure he's looking at the direction the hand is coming. Make sure it's going slow and fluid movements. I, like, I always tell people like it's under, you're underwater. I'm not offering a treat at this point. And he's just chewing on my finger. But you can see I'm moving my hand because of the work that we did before, where before this would have created a response. He would have nipped one of my hands. Now he's not. So we're creating that positive association. That's going to be my thumb. I'm still going to need this for later on. Uh, but find a friend who will listen to you, who is not scared of dogs. Because again, he's not being aggressive. He's just trying to communicate, I don't want you to touch me. So all we want to do is just gradually build that in. And I would probably have you practice that same technique because you could actually go all the way past the threshold. So let him chew on it and then go and touch, his, touch him and then pull it aside. Just so all you do is just touch him at first and like do that for maybe three or four treats and the next time touch and like rub once. Touch, rub, touch, rub. Only while he's chewing on the treat. So if he gets used to you doing this interaction with him and he's practiced at this and he's getting him enough treats and he feels good about it and he's comfortable with the guardian, then he starts doing it with other people. Well, this is kind of the new thing that people way that they give me treats. They give me a treat and then they touch me. It's kind of like if every time you go out to your car, there's a weird guy out there and he says, can I give you a hundred dollar bill and open up your, or can I open up your car door? And, and then you're like, okay, that's weird. And he opens it and he throws a hundred dollar bill in your door and then closes it as you're leaving. That dude is going to be able to open your car door probably at any time that you want because he's creating a positive association. It's the same exact sort of situation for him. Uh, now just go slow. And again, if he nips or whatever, don't think of that as negative. What we'd like to do, because as you saw, he did it a couple times for me and we went right back to it. We want the last memory engram that he has if something good. You see he's very interested in my treats. All right, well, this is Mojo, and these are some tips and tricks you can use if you have a dog that, doesn't, that nips when it's, uh, someone tries to touch them.